Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be 5 minutes. Today in the news, The Last of Us Season 1 finale wrapped and all over the internet people are talking about their feelings on the ending and the potential for a Season 2 and what that could mean. And we do have some information, speaking to GQ, Craig Mazin revealed there was no way Part 2 would be completely covered in Season 2. As Neil Druckmann confirmed, it'll be more than one season. Some of the stuff I'm most excited for in Part 2 are the changes we've discussed and seeing the story come to life again in this other version, he continued. And I think it's exciting because it leans into those feelings you had from the game really heavily in a new way. And it also hits the Hollywood thing where if something's successful, you want to keep it going as long as possible. So rather do all of part two in season two, it's like, how, f how much can we stretch this? And so I assume we'll see at least three seasons, maybe more if they can wing it. If you're unfamiliar with part two, uh, <laughs> a lot happens. There's flashbacks and time jumps and new characters and all sorts of controversy, and I think we can all probably guess where they would end, well, if you play the game, you can probably guess where they'd end season two at a dramatic moment, which again, will be very divisive, can't wait to see what the general population thinks. And so of course, people were wondering, would Bella Ramsey return to be Ellie in season two and beyond? And at a press conference ahead of the season finale, executive producer and Naughty Dog co-president Neil Druckmann shared, the only way we would ever Ever consider recasting Bella is if she said, I don't want to work with you guys anymore. Mason shared Druckmann's enthusiasm for Ramsey's Ellie, and he also pointed out that Ramsey's 19 now, which, by the way, is the age Ellie was in The Last of Us Part Two. Clearly, everything is still in pre-production, they're riding high off of the first season, but we can expect some information and some uh, casting, I'm sure, on all the different new roles very soon, but it is an HBO show, so... You may not see a new episode until 2025 for all I know. But I am hoping that the next season, if they're going to stretch it out, they'll take the time to include all my favorite game bits like throwing a brick or bottle to distract something, you know? In other news, tensions from the Russian invasion of Ukraine have leaked into the world of gaming once again with Stalker 2. Over the weekend, a group of Russian hackers by the name of Vesnik TSS shared images and artwork allegedly from the game and threatened to release tens of gigabytes of game material if their needs aren't met. And what are said needs? According to Game Rant, the hackers demand that GSC Game World changes its attitude towards players from Russia and Belarus and apologize for the unworthy attitude towards ordinary players from these countries. The demands also specify bringing back Russian localization to the game as well. But developers GSC Game World were not about to take this lying down. In a response statement tweeted on Sunday, the team shared that this was not their first run-in with cyber attacks and that the support to their country won't change under any circumstances. GSC Game World then went on to say, in the event of any leaks, we ask that you refrain from watching or distributing information about Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. We encourage you to stay patient and wait for the official release for the best experience possible. Sadly, incidents like this are becoming more and more commonplace. The uh, cyber attack on Grand Theft Auto 6 that was sharing all sorts of files, or the ransomware against CD Projekt Red. Stalker 2 has already suffered because of the invasion of Ukraine, and so that the timetable on that game's a mess, and if anything, it just shows the resilience of the team working on it. So I'm totally here for the fact that they're standing up for themselves, they're not letting someone blackmail them, and it's another good modern example of what to do if you're being hacked or harassed or whatever online. Anyway, it's Monday, so that means it's time for new releases. Tomorrow, WWE 2K23, the 10th installment of the WWE 2K series will pile drive its way onto consoles and PC. Game modes such as My Faction, My GM, a full creation suite, career mode, and more will return with new features. And 2K Showcase is back as an interactive sports documentary focusing on the 20 year career of John Cena and War Games. But good luck trying to watch it, because I hear you can't see him. 2K22 already set a pretty high benchmark for the series. A lot of fans are excited. So hopefully, 2K23 can Fireman carry the best of its predecessors into this new release. And then we have the Dark Pictures Switchback VR. Supermassive Games' newest addition to the Dark Pictures franchise hits PSVR 2 this Thursday. From the minds of Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, comes the rail shooter Carnival Nightmare that revisits locations 
from the first season of the Dark Pictures Anthology. It's got sort of a Goosebumps Horror Land meets VR vibe, and I'm totally here for that. And who knows, you may be lucky enough to get it on Scary Game Squad. And finally, prepare to dive back into the Bayonetta series in a new way this Friday with Bayonetta Origins, Cereza and the Lost Demon. Long before she became Bayonetta, a young witch named Cereza took a fateful journey to the forbidden Avalon Forest with her first demon, Cheshire. Together in this action adventure, players will utilize both characters' abilities to take down enemies, solve puzzles, and more. It's actually kind of neat to see the Bayonetta universe expanded through such a different playstyle. And because it's so different, if you want to try it before you buy it, the demo is available on the Switch store right now. Anyway, that is it for 5-Minute Gaming News. See you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye.